Question 21. The graph shows the speed of a skier. Nick wants to estimate the distance travelled by the skier in 140 seconds. He, wants, he works out the area of the triangle with vertices 0, 0, 140, 0 and 99.8. Does Nick's method give a good estimate? So, because we've got a speed time graph, then the area underneath this curve is going to give us the distance travelled by the skier. And Nick is estimating it by using this triangle. So let's draw this triangle in. So we've got vertices at 0, 0, 140, 0, and 99.8, which is there. Okay, so if I draw that triangle in, this is a thin line. Okay, so the area under this triangle um, is um, what Nick's estimate is and we're deciding if this is a good estimate. So is that roughly the same as the area under the curve? But if we have a look then he's including this bit here which shouldn't be there but he's not including this bit here that should be there so they kind of cancel each other out and these here I mean all together I think they're roughly cancelling each other out so um, does Nick's method give a good estimate? It's an estimate, so I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say um, so the extra area cancels out with missed area. Yeah, so the extra bit that he's counting is cancelled out with the, with the bit that he missed. Um, so I'm going to say that's a good estimate. Okay, so part B says use Nick's method to work out an estimate of the distance. So using Nick's method we just need to work out the area of this triangle. Well, um, the area is going to be the base times by the height divided by 2. The base is 140. So, um, so the distance is going to be equal to 140 um, times by the height, which is going to be 9.8 divided by 2, um, and that's going to be 140 times 9.8 divided by 2 and that gives us 686 so roughly 686 meters Helen uses a different method she starts by estimating how many of the smallest squares are in the region between the graph and the horizontal axes her estimate is 1550 squares that's all these little squares here that she's estimating are before, but I'm um, sorry, below this curve. And we need to complete Helen's method to estimate the distance. So it's not telling us the distance, it's just telling us how many squares. So I need to work out what distance each square, each little square represents. So each little square, each of those little squares has got a width of two seconds and a height of 0 0.2 meters per second. So the square is going to represent 2 seconds times by 0 0.2 meters per second and that's going to tell us that that's each square is worth 0 0.4 meters. So just to clarify 2 seconds is the width and the height is 0 0.2 meters. Yeah, It's coming from this scale here 2 times 0 0.2 tells us that each square is worth 0 0.4 meters. So if there's 1,550 squares that are worth 0 0.4 meters, I can do 1,550 
times by 0 0.4 1550 times by 0 0.4 and that tells me that there's 620 meters okay so that's equal to 620 so using Helen's method her estimate is going to be 620 meters and I would say that Helen's estimate is is going to be better than Nick's estimate um, because it's um, using something that looks like it's going to be more accurate okay um, question 22 the value of a car of e pounds after t years is modeled by this equation here the value of the car when new was 22,000 um, pounds so when it was new that's when t was zero there was no time passed and the value of the car after two years so when t is two um, is 14,080 pounds we need to work out the values of a and k so the value of the car when it was new was 22,000 pounds so when t is zero v is 22,000 so I can write down an equation for that 22 1 2 3 is going to be equal to a times k to the power of 0 and k to the power of 0 is going to be 1 so it's just going to be a times 1 which means that a is going to be equal to 22,000 pounds the value of the car after 2 years is 14,080 pounds so I know that after 2 years I've got 14,080 pounds and that's going to be equal to A which I've now worked out to be 22,000 times K to the power of negative T which is 2 so it's going to be negative 2 so K to the power of negative 2 must be equal to 14,080 divided by 22,000. So I'm just going to write that down. k to the power of negative 2 is going to be equal to 14,080 divided by 22,000 pounds. So um, that means that k squared must be equal to the reciprocal of this. So we've got 22,000 divided by 14,080. Okay, so I can now use my calculator. Let's um, stick that in there. So we've got 22 divided by 14. That gives me 25 sixteenths and um, that tells me that k is going to be equal to the square root of 25 sixteenth which is going to be equal to 5 quarters so I've got A that's going to be equal to 22, 1, 2, 3, 22,000 and K is going to be equal to 5 quarters 